time at Zodiacus. I thought you were, I thought you were going, like, I thought oh, you were no, making sorry. a cutoff was, motion. That was, was a go for it. And also my neck itches. <laughs> I, I really thought it was a, <laughs> a cut. <laughs> I'm Heather Zagowski, the babe with the power, and coming up next on WAYO LP Rochester is the sound of tomorrow, where we're talking about banned books, we're talking about abortion, we've got some COVID news, we've got some TV talk, and maybe a few other fun little tidbits, who knows what we'll get into, you never know, could be anything, but first. La la la, mm, 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 mm. Oh my gosh, that is delicious. Mm. Oh, what's that you got? Ooh, it's my pumpkin spice apple pie cider chino. Mm. 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 Sounds awfully sweet. Is it good though? I don't even care, you know? It just feels like fall, you know? Like, mm, 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 mm. Fall. Oh, wait, what? I just adore autumn. No, you don't. I do, too. See, I've got on my cutest flannel shirt, and I spent all last weekend making some delicious soup in front of a roaring fire. Later on, I'm going apple picking. You made soup in front of a fire? Like, in your living room? Well, yeah, so that part was dumb, admittedly. And isn't apple picking where you pay people to pick their fruit for them? I know! What fun! I'm a little concerned. (gasps) <gasps> concerned that I wasn't going to invite you to go leaf peeping with me because I would never, ever forget to take you along. The fall foliage is ever so delightful. Okay, first of all, leaf peeping sounds only quasi-legal. And Ross, it's not even fall yet. What's going on with you? <gasps> I just can't wait. I have been watching When Harry Met Sally on a loop for like a week now. It's just the perfect fall movie, don't you think? I don't think. No, no. Listen, I don't know who you've been talking to, but it's not fall yet. And everybody knows that fall is the worst season of the year next to winter, which I don't even really consider a season so much as months long frozen nightmare interrupted by a fun New Year's party. What has gotten into you? I have just decided not to be so negative, you know, like other people get jealous of the change of seasons that we have just right in front of us. So I figured, why not enjoy it? Pumpkins, pie baking, warm applesauce, pumpkin pie, pie pumpkins, sweaters with little pumpkins on them. I don't know, you know, Ross, all that stuff. need I remind you that fall is merely a gateway to winter? You know, winter with frostbite and hot drinks, except they get cold and now they're frozen and slippery ice under your tires. Nope, I'm turning over a new fall leaf. The new Ross loves seasons. Really? Even how you step in slush and then it's all frozen and cold and then you think it'll be fine when you get inside, except then it just melts and your feet get all cold? Oh, that part is really stinky. Oh, yeah, right. how every time you have to leave the house, there's like three inches of ice on your windshield that you have to smash through, but hopefully not smash the windshield as well. Okay, I don't like that bit, no. Oh, and yeah. how the Hallmark Channel stops showing Golden Girls and instead runs Christmas movies 24-7. I mean, I do like my Hallmark holiday movies, but I dislike them not showing Golden Girls. That's true. That's a Don't stooge. forget vitamin D deficiency and SAD. Ugh, you're right. Oh my God, what am I thinking? Being all happy. So stupid. God, you're right. This is awful. Ugh. But okay, I mean, at least there's time, you know? It's not even really officially fall yet. You know as well as I do that winter is practically here. You know, either you have taught me a powerful lesson today. That the future holds nothing but doom and gloom and despair? Yeah, that's about it. I mean, at least this pumpkin spice apple pie cider chino is pretty good. Is it... is it really? No. It tastes pretty much like rotten fruit garbage after the first two sips. Like, really stinky, like, ooh, yuck. Like, it's like your fruit a got... Wise like a person. Fell. Like... It's a wise person who can admit their mistakes. Like fruit that... You know, like it's been sitting at the bottom of the garbage can and it gets that juice, like the juice at the bottom and you get all that like and it's like there are flies and stuff. 
It kind of tastes like, like you the think crab that apples taste. that fall off the tree on a hot yeah. summer day. But if and you they put just cinnamon sit there in, in it. the sun, yeah. Uh, but with ginger, okay. yeah, huh. with like ginger. Hmm. Nutmeg. Probably probably wasn't worth six bucks. I'm just gonna say that right now. <laughs> Never is. Hi, everybody. I'm Ross Johnson, your favorite co-host. And I'm Heather Zykowski, the babe with the power. Welcome back to another Sound of Tomorrow right here on WAYO LP Rochester. We're with the stuff and the people downtime and the everybody's coming to the Sound of Tomorrow. That's great. That Yeah. Are, are we going to put music to that and that'll be like our alternate theme? No, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just um just literally phoning it in at this point. So it's it's not just getting worse and <laughs> worse. I mean, worse pretty much. Worse. Yeah. <laughs> Hi Heather, how That's are you? That's all right. I'm doing great. How are we you? We have a we good. I'm good. We have a packed show today, believe it or not. We do. Um we I feel like maybe we should jump right in. Um what should we talk about first? Well, Ross, I want to tell you I have a bit of a crisis on my hands. Okay. Is it menopause? Oh, always, always. And that is, that's another thing that I, I do want to talk about on this show. I have to organize some thoughts around my... I've been, I've been asking you if it was menopause since you were 20, and I'm really glad we could finally... Keep on going. It's finally I paying off. Yeah. I absolutely love this this talk of menopause. It should be a thing that people talk about. I it's love it when secret. you get real. Yeah, that's About lady right. stuff. When lady stuff is, is stuff that a lot of human beings go through sure um but no it's it's not it's not a menopause crisis today not yet um instead it it's i guess an easier a smaller crisis there's too much tv and i don't know what to do Hmm. all my favorite shows just like dropped new seasons and i i'm i'm struggling i don't know how how um... to prioritize so basically every so this basically like every teenager showed up to work at the CW at once and now you don't know <laughs> what to do with yourself pretty much well not even that like so i did prioritize with what turns out was the final season of lucifer okay that helps it's done that helps. It made me sad it's good news though it's isn't all it? done that it's done aren't you glad when things are done no. And then you're like, oh, good. Whew. Whew. Finally. I don't have to no. have that on my list anymore. Okay, no, well, that makes it, me well, sad. you're doing it wrong. Really this is like why I'm just going to tell you. I'm just going to tell you you're doing it wrong. And this is why you're stressed out. <laughs> if Maybe you can't that's even, it. Maybe I should be like, thank goodness. No if you more can't even appreciate If you can't even appreciate the wins, <laughs> you're not going to. So I'm already like, I'm, I'm way behind on Roswell because I was too busy watching Lucifer. But then a new season of Nailed It just dropped. Then apparently Drag Race UK is out, but I'm not even caught up on Drag Race Holland. A brand new season of Sex Education. I started the new season of the US Circle, but had to drop off with that again because new Lucifer came out. And then there's a too hot to handle Latino edition out. Well, you're just going to have to, uh, you're going to have to quit your job is what it comes down to. Yeah, I don't. I mean, maybe I. I'm seriously like I'm in a I'm in a crisis. I don't know how there to is, handle it all. There is way too much TV, and then people will come up to you and be like, "Hey, have you seen blah blah blah?" And you're like, "Shut up! I don't care. I, know. I do not I want know. to be sold on anything else." I thought because I had said for years, like I wish they would just stop making TV for like a year, and then I'll catch up. And then they yeah, did you have that. said that. <laughs> then I my wish was granted. But in a monkey's paw sort of fashion where it was a global pandemic. Um, so <laughs> that's why I don't make wishes anymore. Sorry, everybody, about that. That was me. Um, um, and then I still am not caught up. So No, I don't think I'm ever going to be caught up. My cue is absurd. And now I've been told that I should watch Ted Lasso. Yeah, everybody says Ted Lasso. Okay. I have not watched Ted Lasso. Oh, you watch boy. hacks though. Yeah. You watch hacks though too. What? What's that? Is that a reality hacks show? Is, hacks is on. No, it's on HBO. It's got Gene Smart. I don't have HBO. Well, then you're in luck. You don't have you don't have Apple TV either. So you're talking about a bunch of shows that like. <laughs> oh, so good! I can't watch Ted Lasso. Correct. Good. Not, not See, unless you're willing to spend. That... Not unless you're willing to spend three dollars a month or whatever. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you would you never think I am do. made out of money? Right. 
Jeepers, creepers. Who do you think I am? <laughs> no, see, that's <laughs> a bit Melania of a relief. Trump? <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit of a relief because at least then when people tell me like oh you should watch that and i go like oh, i would but yeah i don't have hbo <laughs> where am i gonna get where am i gonna get three dollars plus a free trial <laughs> i mean where? what what yeah what what do you what am i supposed to do it is like, it's too much and i do i, I do know. genuinely i do genuinely get mad at people um and mike the other day goes because we we started um because you know how i like my supermans I make fun of you for CW, but you know, I like my Supermans. Um, You do? And Smallville ran for, I think, nine seasons. And we, several uh, several years back, we said, we should watch Smallville. And this is when you had to buy DVDs. So we bought all the Smallville DVDs. (laughs) Um, Wow. And we we got through, like, we made it through season two. And the other Uh day, Mike goes, and the other day, Mike goes, oh, yeah, we never finished Smallville. And I was like, I, okay. I don't know when that, you know, <laughs> you, I guess yes. we'll just, <laughs> I guess we'll just not bathe or go to work or feed the dogs <laughs> and we'll just watch Smallville. <laughs> That's great. I, um, you know, I was watching that, you know, back in the old days when Netflix used to come to your house in a red envelope. Right. Right. Like they would mail you the DVDs. <laughs> like it was porn. I really enjoyed like it. Like everything looked like porn. <laughs> you know, no, because it was all in the red envelope and not a plain brown package. Oh, right. Oh, right. <laughs> so you get the red one that was not fine, and then the other one was... Porn. Yes. Did Netflix have a porn section? It was not all discreet. Section? They didn't I have don't. a porn section. Like like the old video stores, remember? You know, I don't think... I don't think they did, but I... Probably not. I sound so innocent. I never looked. <laughs> I never looked. I don't know. They How probably did you... Did I mean, you did order your envelopes through a website, didn't you? My envelopes of what? Your like your your Netflix envelopes. I never had. I never did that. I never had that. Oh, all right. Because I'm sure I didn't do it on the phone. This wasn't even that long ago. This <laughs> was probably call like people what? and be like, I, "Hello, I would." I, oh, hello. I would like disc. Yes. I would like disc four of season three of Smallville, please. <laughs> that's, that's it. I'm just and placing l- my weekly Netflix order. <laughs> Linda would write it down on a post-it. Yeah, I don't know. Yes. I think I think you probably did that online. They okay. still had the internet. It was just not. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, we oldsters get confused about we <laughs> what do. happened when. We do. I I know, but I have a feeling that anything involving the phone, I've not done in a very long time. Yeah, like if it were calling, even even like. Yeah, I don't want to talk to anybody. So I that's... really don't. Like to the extent that I have just some regular routine appointments to schedule. And the thing that is keeping me from doing this is I must use the telephone. Oh yeah. Yeah, if I can do it online. Uh any uh-huh. businesses out there, get an online thing. Do it. Yeah. It's worth it. Yeah. Definitely. That's the it only is way we're gonna do so it. worth it. Yep, because even olds like ourselves who used to use the telephone all the time because we had absolutely no other no other choice. We don't want to use the phone. No, I think less even. It's probably like, maybe it's a novelty for, <laughs> maybe it's a novelty for the youngsters, but for us, it's just a pain in the butt. Yeah, definitely. You know what? Um, along those lines with using the phone, making appointments and stuff, um, I got a flu shot the other day and it was the greatest thing in the world. I used to not have to worry about this because when I worked in an office, And you might remember, we might have gotten our flu shots together at some point when we worked together. We just went to the conference room and got a shot. Yeah. But now that I work from home the past several years, well, there was one year I forgot the flu shot. But this year and last year, I remembered, wow, this walk into any old pharmacy and say you'd like a flu shot and they just give you one. It's great. Yeah, I got mine at CVS last year. I haven't I haven't gotten one this year. Um, What I was reading was. There is the possibility, but not much evidence. I mean, the the upshot of what I'm about to tell you is get your flu shot, get it now, get it whenever. Um, but the, I was sort of timing it out because what I was reading was basically there's, there's the possibility, though not a lot of evidence, that um, the efficacy of the flu shot could but possibly wane a tiny bit by the end of flu season. Um, mm. And to the point it made me, it, it, but they said definitely by like end of October. So I was convinced from this, I was convinced from this news piece that I was going to wait until like the beginning of October. Cause I feel like I'm probably not getting the flu between now and then, but, um, 
nevertheless, the upshot of what I'm saying is go ahead and get a flu shot. Get it now. Um, definitely get it before the end of October. But I'm I, it's this is partially my excuse to wait because you have to walk in. You still have to walk in and talk to somebody, which is no good. I can't get it online. I have to. Um, yes, I actually I'm going on a trip in like April. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see um, where I have to get a covid test. Well, right now for this trip that I'm going on, if I were to do this trip now, I'd have to get a COVID test like two days before. Yeah. But we'll we'll be in the place like we won't be home with the time to get so I'll have to go to the place, find a place to get a COVID test and get a COVID test, which I guess is fine, but I don't know. It's all it's all complicated, but it's good. But I know people are doing it and you walk into drugstores seem to be just like magical places anymore. You walk in, you get a flu shot, you get a COVID test, you get whatever you want. It's great. You get a people magazine, you're all set. Is that where you go? You can just go to CVS and say like, hey, I'd like a COVID test, please. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's that easy because I haven't done it. So I don't know if you, um, I don't know if you have to make an appointment. I don't know if that's the best. I know there are different kinds. So I don't know if that's the best place to do it, but I know you can like, yeah, there is like a, like a drugstore is a, um, generally is a reasonable place to get a COVID test. So. That is so, I didn't know that. And it's been mysterious to me. Like if I need to get a COVID test, how do I do it? So that was really helpful. Yeah. The other thing is, oh yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, I went to CVS for my flu shot and the pharmacist who was administering the flu shot was also super psyched about the vaccine boosters being approved. Yeah. And he gave me a good tip because I guess the verdict is still, but we'll get to that. (laughs) before you say they that. haven't been yet but he's he's psyched about it coming he thinks it's going to be okay and he loves the idea of people getting boosters this was just his own personal opinion okay he was not saying i'm a professional and i recommend he was merely expressing his own support for it so not saying that i had a doctor give me medical advice just talking no and i'm not i'm not saying boosters are bad i'm just saying the availability of boosters is probably not what we thought it was going to be at this point but that's i i I can get that but go ahead not yet but he was telling me that if they're approved and when they're available the cvs i was at was going to have the moderna shot okay and there are other cvs's in town that have pfizer like i have because as of now there's no determination on whether you should mix and match like if you got j and j should you get a (laughs) pfizer if you got moderna should you get a pfizer stuff like that but um it was just kind of neat to hear that pharmacies in our area too were already set up for like nope we have moderna here they have pfizer there like oh i had no idea where have you been it's kind of cool under people a rock. Been lined, people have been lined up at drugstores for like six months getting these shots what are you talking about <laughs> i didn't know that they had different ones at different cvs's oh okay so you oh okay so you you so it's the avail, avail the ability to pick and choose is what you want Yes, 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 oh, yes. Gotcha. Okay. Because I know when I went to the the convention center downtown, if I wanted Moderna, I could head myself out of that building to a different place where Moderna was being administered. Right. I couldn't I mean there I could have like scheduled an appointment at a place with Moderna. But I didn't know that like between CVSs, you could mix and match. I guess I just assumed CVS had one or the other. Right. Yeah, you would think so. That's interesting. Um, right. So yeah. that was what I found interesting. No, I knew that. In in fact, I was very, well, okay, I'll tell you, I had mixed feelings about this. I was impressed and also dismayed that before me in kind of in line, there wasn't really a line, but somebody else was getting a shot. It was someone getting a COVID shot. And because I'm a jerk, part of me was like, wow, took you long enough. Yeah. I, that was my jerky side. That no, was my. I, I had a jerky thing. I, I saw somebody with a, at the, at the salon where I get my hair done. I saw um, uh, somebody at, working there with a, like a bandaid on their arm just like last week. And I was like, did you just get your COVID shot? And then I was like, I guess that could be a flu shot or literally anything else. Yes. So I probably shouldn't. Yeah, I shouldn't be judgy about it anyway. And it's not like I was going to say anything, but (laughs) I shouldn't, you know, I should just be glad that they got it eventually if that was the case. But 
it's also flu shot time or literally it could be anything else, you know, it's like, Absolutely, are you, oh, you're yeah. just getting your COVID shot. And it's like, no, I've got a medical disorder and I need to get a shot in my arm, which happens all the time for people a lot. So <laughs> I know what you mean. Though. Right. I like to get judged. But the, the person definitely like, because I could overhear what was being said. So this person, my judginess of like, you're just now getting a COVID shot. Yeah. Just now. But also I was pleased. I was like, all right, well, I guess you held out and something changed your mind. So oh, that's happening uh, a lot. So that's a good segue. So this, yeah, is, one, this is my little bit of COVID thing. news. So we were talking about that. So um, I was excited about the boosters and it sounds like we're not getting boosters anytime soon, at least for you and me. So the FDI, the FDA advisory panel voted, um, voted not basically voted voted that voted to uh, recommend that boosters are not um, uh, particularly efficacious for most people. So the recommendation they made and the administration hasn't followed through on this yet as far as like what they've decided, but usually um, the FDA and the administration would follow the advisory board recommendation. That's very typical. Um, So the, so as of now, they voted to recommend that people age 65 or over or people at high risk, um, which and that might include healthcare workers, are mm-hmm. might be eligible for boosters after after September 20th, which I guess is happened. <laughs> looking at the date, just looking at my calendar. Um, for everybody else, um, they are recommending uh, they are not recommending that at this time. And the the, the sort of good news, bad there, news is there is that the well the bad news is that we are not are probably not getting those sweet sweet booster shots anytime soon unless you're in one of those other categories when i say we i'm just talking specifically about me and heather yeah you Um, and i um you know the good news is the reason that they're not recommending that for everybody is that even though there's evidence of some diminishment of you know the vaccine efficacy over time it's not really enough they're hold they hold up pretty darn well at least from what we've seen so far so you know that's in flux but we'll see but i would like to get a booster shot myself so i'm <laughs> like if it's an option i will do it <laughs> i know, you know me too if there's if there's any chance of getting one if i can like i don't know gray up my hair and go in maybe i'll get one you know i i, I would i would get a booster i'll get a booster i'll get a booster now i'll get one next month i don't care yeah <laughs> No, I'm all for it. And like I said, you know, the pharmacist and I were speaking excitedly about the possibility of boosters. And I was saying, well, you know, if they tell me that it's my time and it's my turn to get one, you know, I'm going to be standing right here going, boost me up. Well, I'd like to. Yeah. And we have a couple of things coming up. Like we have a thing in December and a thing in like April, the April thing. I mean, things will either be so much worse that it won't matter <laughs> or they'll be better. I would think like, hopefully we're not just, hopefully next April rolls around and we're still not just holding the line in the same sort of holding pattern of, you know, I know, kind of barely holding it back, but we'll see. But I would love to, it'd be nice to, if I could get a booster shot before doing any of that stuff, I would love that. I know. That would I know. I've got better. a thing in November that, you know, I'll be, I'll be careful. Um, I will, but you know, it was interesting because the other night along those lines, I took myself out to the movies for the first time in, Ooh. I guess, a couple years. That's fun. It was fun. I was a little scared. It was um, at a theater where they were doing kind of a double vaccination check. Like you had to bring in your card or your Excelsior pass. Okay. And then you also had to show a photo ID to prove that you were the person who matched the card. Okay. Which was kind of interesting. But they had also said that it was going to be limited seating, and it was not limited seating. Yeah. And I was a little, I was a little panicky, but um, I just, I, I wore a mask like the whole time. And a lot of people were being cautious with their masks too. Like someone went to sit down next to me and that, that was fine. It was fine. They had some popcorn. So of course they you know had their snack put the mask on after i was like well i mean they can't like eat with a mask on it's nice they put it on after but last week you might remember that we were talking about whether masks would be effective in sopping up tears 
Oh, so good. So oh, good. good. If you cry in public like I do, I saw David Byrne's American Utopia. Oh, it okay. was it was out of this world. But Which you could I have was, watched at home if you had H- if you spent three bucks for HBO, by the way. But it was <laughs> just throwing on that out there. a huge, huge screen. But you saw huge it. Huge screen. You saw it. I'm not listen. I'm, this is not me judging your choices, but you saw the concert. <laughs> <laughs> I which did. Was alive I loved on it. A t- and a tiny little thing because we were very, very far away. Um, yes. <laughs> I was farther away than you. <laughs> specifically, like, I don't think we each knew that the other was going to this thing. And I was complaining, like, oh my God, the seats I got were like so terrible. You wouldn't believe it. And Heather was like behind. Heather was like two rows behind me. <laughs> so it was, we no, both. I was had... on the lawn. Right. I was being, I was being nice. I was trying not to. <laughs> No, but, I was yeah. way up on the lawn, and I I do remember that you you had many screaming people around you, and it was quite distracting. Whereas I was dancing my feet off, having a blast. No, I did see the concert, but I wanted to see it on a big movie screen. All right, and it was I'm great, but well, I, I was hope... definitely a mess. Well, I and hope having it was a mask was awesome because <laughs> you could just pull it up over your eyes. Well, I could um, dab at my mascara that was running and kind of oh, absorb nice. it up with the edge of my mask. And people couldn't see the horrible, ugly cry faces I was making. I think they still can. It kind see of those muffled any mask. sobs. Oh, muffling sobs yeah. is good. That's a good yeah. use of a mask. Yep. So uh, so it was it was a great success. Well, good. That is a good that is a good that is a good concert film. It was so good. And thanks for letting me know it's on HBO. I watched it on TV. (laughs) Did you? I did. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah. No, it was really good. It was excellent. I liked it. I mean, it was a concert we saw pretty much, but it was good. It's nice to see. It was nice to see it on TV. It was. But we didn't see it very well. It was much easier to watch on TV or a film screen than from where we were seated. So... That was the thing. Like, I couldn't really see any of the the dancers' faces, for example. Yeah. When we saw the tour, except when they would zoom in on the big monitor screen, you know? Right. Still, Um, that was a blast. That show is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. But anyway, we have now resolved. Crying in public, wearing a mask, these things do work out really great together. That's That's a hot tip. But it really is. (laughs) <laughs> not calling it a hot pick because I will forget to um, put in the hot pick uh, music. So there's no point in that anymore. Heather, you, you enjoy books. I love books. Do you? Like... <laughs> so by extension, you must love book bands. <laughs> this um... is so. <laughs> Ugh. This is, um, this is, this is. What you got? What's going on? So... What's going on? This is we we've talked a couple times about all of the like critical race theory stuff and the like oh, oh we're, we we found an excuse to like not talk about black people. So this was this is just this is going on all over the country. Maybe not all over the country, but it's going on in different places around the country. Um and it's a it's a good reason to I think pay attention to, you know, you might think like a school board election or something like that isn't relevant to you, but um, I think the people who are, who are on a large scale now at this point, like banning books and banning um, uh, elements of history curriculum that have to do with um, black people, people of color, anything like that. Those people are definitely turning out for these school board elections. So it's something you probably want to keep in mind. Um, but so York, Pennsylvania, the central York school district in York, Pennsylvania, this is just, I don't know if this is the most egregious case of this, but it's the most like obvious, like it's just the least it's, it's among the, it's, I'll say it's the least subtle I've seen. Okay. So they, um, last October, they instituted a, what they, what they were calling a freeze on all these different books. And I'll give you some examples in a moment, but they were, they instituted a freeze on all these different books while they analyzed because there were concerns brought to them from the parents about these book, all these books. So that means, you know, they can't be taught in classes. They're out of the school libraries, you know, pulled off the shelves. <sighs> um, can't you can't be used in lesson plans, etc. 
Um, <laughs> the school board president says, and this will give you an idea of the kind of things that are they've taken out. And it's a huge list, so I'm not even going to read you all the, the entire list. But the school board president, Jane Johnson, says, the fact that all the banned materials are by or about people of color is just a coincidence. Oh, <laughs> concerns were based on the content of the resources, not the author or topic, she said in a statement. Um, and there's been a protest recently by some by students, but all the news articles I was finding about this. So this one's from CNN, but you can find this sp- talked about in a lot of places. Um, they talk about the community being split about these books. So um, one parent said the community is 100 percent against a critical race theory indoctrination agenda. Um, school is not the place for politics or identity be, to be shaped. Um, the article helpfully points out that critical race theory is not taught in the K through 12 curriculum anywhere in the country. Um, <laughs> um, uh, York parent, Matt Wyant, uh, said, commended the board and said, I don't want my daughter growing up feeling guilty because she's white. So some of the books, I mean, I, and it's almost more helpful to see, I'll give I'll give people a place they can go if they want more information about this and and a little something they could do. It's almost more helpful if you see the covers of the books that are being banned because I mean the kind of thing I mean it, it's a lot of it's a ton of kids books and it's like uh huh it's like um you know what was the March on Washington um you know and it's like a cartoon of Martin Luther King um there's one called um. There's an, like an I Am series. So there's I Am Martin Luther King Jr. Um, I Am Maya Angelou. I Am, I mean, they're little kids books. I sort of looked up, like one of them that came up was I Am Rosa Parks. So uh, several books about Rosa Parks are, are banned. Um, the I Am Rosa Parks, I just, just out of curiosity. So it's by Brad Meltzer and uh, Christopher Eliopoulos. And this one came up a little more because Brad Meltzer's a little bit of a big, big name author. Um, and the reviews were like, oh, this is a really nice book to introduce your kids to Rosa Parks. It's a little mm-hmm. bland, you know, it's a little, the, 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 the criticisms of it from just a general nothing to do with any of this perspective were like, oh, right. it's a little, it's a little toned down. It's a little, it's a little, it's not, you know, it's very unfiery. It's, it's a little, you know, maybe, maybe if you want to teach your kids about Rosa Parks, this is a little, you know, it doesn't give you the full scope of the, it's very safe. Okay. You know what I mean? That was sort of the okay. that was sort of the. Criticism. So like if you it went to like, a, if you went to ahead. a big box bookstore, that would be what you know people who've read the books were saying to potential buyers of the book. Right, right. Like in the comments, okay. So it wasn't it wasn't like <laughs> the criticisms were not like, oh my god, this is critical race theory, and it's uh, telling all it's telling white people to rise. It's you know it's teaching white children to sure. rise or <laughs> teaching black children to rise up and kill your white neighbors mm-hmm. or what you know it's not that book right. Um, right i'm looking at some other stuff here there are books about there are books on cooking like just what the just like african-american and african specifically themed like cooking books about food from different places um an indigenous I... people's history of the united states uh george takei's autobiography where, uh, about um you know about being in uh you know growing up in an internment camp that's in there <laughs> I'm just flipping through this, you know, books about Sonia Sotomayor again, but so many of them are, there's a book about Audra McDonald, who's a black Broadway star, just like currently not <laughs> even like, <laughs> I mean, it, so it's just so absurd. Cause if you go, I'm scrolling through this list with all the covers right now. And it is just, it is, there is really, I mean, there's very little, I mean, there's some, older stuff that you know that that maybe if you were one of these school board members you could i wouldn't make this case i don't think any reasonable person could make this case but there are things that are a little more adult a little more maybe a little more fiery okay again i'm not saying okay to that either but i most of it is it looks so tame so incredibly tame and just anything, it's like anything about black people. Mm-hmm. Um, there's like a kid's book about the hidden figures, women. Um, it's just, so I don't know what to say about this, except this is something we really need to be on guard for and aware of. Yeah. And I mean, just the really, the real danger of 
raising a, as poor as the education in this country about our own history and about the history of, you know, people of color, queer people, you name it, women, whatever, you know, <laughs> in, in, a, in a lot of categories, we have a lot of holes that <laughs> we're not filling very well. Um, mm-hmm. And that now we're potentially raising a generation where we're not even doing that much, where we're literally pulling books off the shelves if they mention black people. I mean, the Audra McDonald thing kills me. I mean, Audra McDonald, she's a singer on Broadway. She's a, she's yeah. a Broadway, she's a singer in musicals on Broadway. I mean, it's not like, and I haven't read the book. I mean, maybe it says, you know, come to Broadway and kill all the white people. I don't know. You know, I mean, I don't think so, though. <laughs> I don't I, think so. I'm, I would be willing to put money on right. it not saying that. Right. <laughs> This is, I kind of, hearing about this, I have to admit, I, it kind of fills me with a sort of uh, panic that is taking my breath away a little bit. Yeah, it's it's panicking inducing. It It really is a little bit. Yeah. Because you, you see, you're, I feel like we're watching history be erased in front of us, um, at yes, least in the, are, in the minds of an awful lot of kids. I And I know... At times, even from people that I've met in real life, I'll see, for example, people I'm friends with on Facebook that I haven't interacted with in person in years, mm-hmm. railing against critical race theory, but they don't know what it is. Right. And Or, or can give you an example not, of it or where it's being taught or, yeah. Right. And, and they have these wild notions. One person was was saying wild things about being told that critical race theory is members of BLM telling white people that white people are incapable of being moral. And I'm like, ha what there's a lot. Okay, where do we start? How do you even start no, with it's that? Not. Yeah. Members of BLM? Members. I didn't, is that a club? Did no one, did, wait, is, did, I can't be moral, what? Like, uh, and, and really, like, it's it's flabbergasting to me. Absolutely and, and, flabbergasting. Because, and yeah, you don't even know where to start. Right, and then when people would come in and go like, no, that's not what it is, and, and you don't have membership cards for BLM, it's not a club, it's so maybe you misspoke when you said member, maybe you meant <laughs> supporter of. And like, no, that's not what people who support Black Lives Matter go around saying that white people are incapable of being moral. And also that's not critical race theory. So, but the, there's somehow just, you point these things out and the person is just like, no, no, I know what critical race theory is, and they're teaching it in the schools, and they're ruining our children, telling them that they're bad people. It's like, they're, well, no, they're not. Yeah, it's, well, and it's, you know, the same thing we're running into with people who don't know what a vaccine is, <laughs> but we'll give you all sorts of, you know, medical information about, you know, horse tranquilizer, or, you know, horse pills. Right, um, right. I've, <laughs> yeah, I've heard about some protests around town against vaccines, and there are apparently signs, again, this is, the protesters are carrying signs that say Invermectin. It's Invermectin, right? I think so, yeah. Invermectin works. And when I heard that, I was like, yes. Yes, it does. It's quite effective for deworming horses. <laughs> well, it does and work. It's so, and it's so like arbitrary. It, I mean, it's like, here, here's, you know, here are vaccines that have been studied for this, and they've looked at them, and they've done this. Scientists have also looked at Invermectin for what it does and come. I mean, it's the same. The same types of people are looking at both types of medicines and saying this is good for this and this is good for this. And you're going, I don't care who's looked at this. I look at this and I say this is, um, you know, this is good for me instead. I, You know, it's 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 flabbergasting. And I don't know. Again, I don't know what to do with any of this. Um, there is a. Before we move off of this real quick, um, and I'm not saying we have to move off of this, just before before I forget, there's a, if, this is a very small 
way to help with a big problem. But if it interests anybody, I thought I'd throw this out. So in um, if, if you just do, do a search, bookshop.org is doing a thing with uh, Bluebird Books. So if you just search for like Book Drive, York, PA, Little Libraries, or some combination of those words, it should take you to uh, a, a page on bookshop.org. That's to the whole address is too long to read out, so I'm not going to do it. But they are the... Uh, community members in uh, York, Pennsylvania. I guess the central library system in York, Pennsylvania is sort of appalled by all this as well. So they, they are okay. trying to keep, get these books on the shelves, but there's also um, if you want, there's an address that you can um, use to support for the little free libraries in the community. They're trying to buy as many of these books as possible and get them into these little free libraries so that kids will still have access to these books. So that's, you know, that's a, that's a that's a tiny band-aid on a big nationwide problem of <laughs> book banning, but it is something that people could consider doing if you want to um, help get a banned book into the hands of a child who might desperately need it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which I think is an awful lot of children. I yeah. mean, I'm that's just appalling. And then this goes back to a childhood passion of mine. Having the books on food pulled, that's <laughs> cruel. Yeah. When I was a child, one of my favorite things was to read about what people were eating. And anytime I could read what people who weren't in the U.S. were eating, I wanted to know. I wanted to imagine how that tasted, you know? Well, and that's where it gets so it's, you know, that, that's that's another example, all of these, but that's another example where it's so egregious. It's like, a book about food you're you know you there's a book about what <laughs> you know what people in africa eat and that's like way too and i mean the other thing they've done with this is they haven't so there's no this is just sort of an indefinite uh ban based on nothing so the the, the way they're the way they're expressing this is we've taken these books out, you know, we have a concern about these books. So we've taken them off the shelves indefinitely forever. Um, until such a time as we can review them and determine that they're safe, which they're not doing obviously, because they've, this has been a, going on for a year and there's not been a single move in that direction. Not that that's the way <laughs> to approach something. I mean, you know, if you want to review something and say, this is why we've pulled it off the shelf, you know, taken out of curriculum for this and this and this and this and this reason, at least that's an honest, you know, maybe it's a good reason, maybe it's a dumb reason, at least that's an honest way to approach it. <laughs> but just to say, any, any book that has a black person on the cover, we've taken off the shelf right. just in case, and we'll get back to these, you know, we'll get back to you yep. and see and let you know. Yeah, because I was going to ask you if the reason the books on food in Africa and um, African cooking were pulled is because maybe they showed a picture of a black person holding a dish of some delicious looking food. If I look at the covers of these books, that's an awful that I don't know what else the criteria would be because, okay. Okay. you know, they said that there were concerns from parents. I, I really doubt, again, even if that's true, that doesn't justify this, but I really doubt that parents were like, pulled this giant list of books um, and I showed very, up. I very, very much doubt. I don't think that was the way that this went. I can't imagine in what world a parent would would be calling with a problem about the This Is Me series for small children about right. important figures in history. And it, and if they did, I mean, it sounds like, <laughs> I mean, because with the I'm school sure district. This Is Me, I'm George Washington as well, right? Right, right. Like, it's not oh, a yeah, problem yeah, with yeah. the This Is Me series. It's only the the Black historical figures whose books well, were pulled, and, yes? And it's, uh, Yeah. Uh, oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And I mean, it sounds like because what the school district is sort of saying is that like parents showed up with concerns about these books at some point in the indefinite past that we're just not sure when that actually happened or who they were. They didn't give us a reason why it was upsetting to them. Um, so we just decided to pull it off the shelf no matter what, because, you know, parents came to came to us with this list of 50 books that were mm -hmm. intolerable to them for no particular reason. Sounds like a lie. It honestly sounds like a lie to me. Oh, it's it's a lie. I mean, I, I don't even think it sounds like a lie. I mean, it's clearly a lie. I mean, it's 100% clearly a lie because none of this happened. 
if it did happen, you would say, you know, parents well, came to us with these concerns. Have, like, Here's what we wrote. We wouldn't... wrote down the concerns. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, it, Here's why. Because a, a lot of parents, if it were over the past, what, 10 years, these parents would have emailed their concerns. The emails could have been easily compiled, you know. And again, oh. these are elected school board members in a community where I don't know what the voting breakdown is or the polling breakdown is, but every article I found basically said, yep, you've got people, sh- you, you, you've got students showing up saying this is bad and parents mm-hmm. showing, showing up saying this is good. Um, everything describes the community as split, but um, not so split that this school board wasn't elected. Uh, so, and you can, did see a picture of the school board. I don't want to, you know, make too many guesses at anyone's background, but you can, you can imagine what the faces of the school board tended to look like (laughs) exclusively. Um, yeah. So, and it's, I mean, it's a shame on so many levels and with the students sitting there themselves saying like, this is bad we want these books and the students don't have control over voting in the school board. It's doing a disservice to our young people. Well, it's doing a disservice to, it's doing a disservice to our country. I mean, it's, I mean our you know, nation, it's, our it's, nation, you know, the, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a charity program to teach history. It's not like, Oh, you know, we'll, we'll do something nice for black people and teach about your history. I mean, it, 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 that's it's not, to have an honest, you know, to, to take an honest look at ourselves that benefits everybody. <laughs> um, and to, to lose that and to create a narrative that excludes people who are already excluded from history in so many ways. <laughs> yeah. It's, I, I, I don't, I, I don't know who can look at, um, well, I mean, I guess I, I guess I can. I mean, it's cause this is, this is not new in the sense that, We've been uh, we've been writing certain groups of people out of history for so long um, that I suppose a reasonable person who came up in the American education system could go, yeah, black people are not that important in this country. Queer people were not that important in this country. Hispanic people were not that important in this country, because if you haven't done your own research, you're probably not getting much more than that in school. No. So, and I mean, we've spoken of this. We should, I guess we shouldn't be surprised. No, and you and I have spoken of this. This that's how we were educated in our public schools. I learned a lot of white history. And then there's the little incidental like, yeah, there was slavery, but like it's over. And Martin Luther King was cool. Like right. cool. And that was pretty much from what I remember what we got. Yeah, you got a little bit you might you you, you got a little bit of Harriet Tubman. <laughs> Maybe, you know? yeah we did get a little harriet tubman we got the tiniest bit of rosa parks which was also a rosa parks was cool right i think we read Uncle and Tom's cabin, <laughs> which is like we, not, you know yeah you know that's we, a little rough huh i want we might have yeah i'm not sure significant but, it, but not as the only book you're going to read on that topic <laughs> right that's i mean that is what we got i mean i my hope would be that it, it would be better now, but it uh, seems like, if anything, it's just uh, lots of stepping backward. Yeah, we'll see. It's so, it, it's, it, it is very alarming. And again, I don't even know. Well, and with so much of this stuff, I'm just coming more and more to the, you know, I like, I, I'm a communicator. I like to talk to people. I love to educate someone. <laughs> but... <laughs> I think with some with so much of this stuff, you, we just got to fight it. I mean, I don't know if there's any, you know, with someone who doesn't believe that a child should be allowed to know that there are black singers on Broadway or that Africans eat food. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't know how you I don't I, I don't know. I don't know that I feel like arguing with that person. I don't know that I feel like having a discussion with that person. I don't know that, know that there's a point. I feel like it's kind of probably an enormous waste of time rather mm-hmm. than just saying like, let's get out there and fight this with everything we've got. And um, if you're going to persist in your belief that, you know, the existence of Maya Angelou should never be revealed to children, then I, <laughs> you know, I, I don't have any, we, I don't think we have anything to say to each other. Yeah. 
Yep, and it does get to that point where it's like this this isn't going to go well. If we try to have a conversation, the conversation is going to go nowhere. Yeah. Well, and it's so, everything's so it's so circular. I mean, people are so, you know, people get so entrenched and you see it with the vaccine stuff and you're like, "Oh, but here's this science and data." And they're like, "Here's the, well, here's a meme that I saw." Mm-hmm, and you're like, mm-hmm. "Okay, but that you realize those aren't co-equal." <laughs> <laughs> right. Like those, yeah. Those aren't the same thing, and they don't realize that. And I don't know how you, you know, I don't know how you teach a f- thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, however old you, you know, past the age of basic childhood education. I don't know how you teach a fifty-year-old that, um, you know, horse medicine, horse dewormer that is giving you diarrhea is not the same as the century, the centuries old, much studied science of <laughs> human vaccines. I, 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 I mean, you, you know, you feel like, okay, I'm just going to try to trick you into doing this. And then, <laughs> then maybe you won't pass along this disease and that'll be it. I don't know what else to do. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cause sometimes there's just really absolutely no point arguing and i think sometimes even though i also i like to communicate and i like to get along sometimes i hear this argument about like yeah well you know you should really try to get along with everyone and i think it was a long time ago i realized like no i'm not going to get along with everyone well and i don't know if we have enough time to cover this topic we were going to talk about abortion for a little bit today and i was saying like I am not going to be best friends with somebody who is avidly anti-abortion. Yeah. Like, I'm just not. And then I've had people say like, yeah, but well, you have to be. I'm like, no, no, I actually don't. I don't think that that person should be beaten. I don't think that that person should be should be kicked or or denied medical treatment themselves maybe though maybe i do if they want to deny medical treatment to women maybe i do think that they shouldn't get the medical treatment that they need i am not going to go and actively beat them i'm also not going to be very nice to them yeah and when people are like no no you you need to be nice i'm like listen we're not going to be friends we are going to scream at each other every weekend because i'm going to be mad that they went and protested outside planned parenthood and then I'm going to scream at them. Then they're going to scream at me. Like, we're not going to have fun. We yeah. won't be having a good time. Well, and I found <laughs> too that friends. I've, you know, what I found so often is that, um, I have tried so often in my life and I still, there, there are plenty of circumstances where I still feel like this is important in, in, in specific circumstances, not every circumstance everymore where like, okay, well, let's try to, you know, let's try to go along and find some common ground and maybe I can nudge somebody my way and blah, 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 blah. Um, and having that completely taken advantage of, um, Mm -hmm. having my willingness to try to see your point of view or try to see your other perspective be completely taken advantage of. And it turns into, Oh, we'll see you, you, you're trying to see my perspective. That must mean I'm right. Um, or, you know, or, or the, or the, you know, I, I'm trying to respect you. You're not trying to respect me. And my my natural inclination to keep trying to do that is just makes it just winds up making me feel like an idiot um, because yeah. I'm because and- you, you're not listening to, a, you know, I'm trying to like I'm trying to like, OK, well, you have a point on this thing. And I would I might ag- I might agree with that, at least in part, but blah, 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 blah. And, you know, the person just goes, well, see, I'm totally right about everything. 100 percent. See, you know, and you're like, OK, I yep. don't know why I bothered with this, because you're not listening to me at all. Yeah. And sometimes and you end right. up wasting no... an awful lot of time with that. You do. And there's no give if there's no. um, If there's a sincere give and take, I mean, that can still be a situation where like. You know, on on reproductive rights, on, you know trans lives on queer right you know there are things that i don't really have patience for a quote-unquote sincere give and take anymore either right um yep but but you don't even get that i mean with you know if you're not even getting that it's not worth your time (laughs) yeah yep yeah and as much as i really don't i don't like to be rude i don't like to scream i don't like to be 
snappy with people. I guess I just have reached certain points of like, yeah. no, that, no, I'm not going to beat you up, but I'm also not going to sit here and listen to you. Yeah. Well, and it's, you know, even that sort of a, even that sort of, a, and we'll have to wrap up, but even that sort of a win for, even that sort of a win for other people in the sense that, you know, a lot of times you, you think about like queer rights where it's like there are people or reproductive rights where someone wants to take away rights that you have. Mm-hmm. And you're like, I want you to live your life in peace and freedom and have all the things that you um, want for yourself in life that are fair and reasonable. And I want you to be healthy and happy and live a long life. Um, you are entirely wrong. Um, yes. but please, please go in peace. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, I want to take away your rights. And um, I know go. it so really even, is. Even 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 giving up on people in that way is still sort yeah. of is still sort of letting them have a little bit of a win, you know, in a way it <laughs> is. And yet. Because I'm not going to root for someone to die. (laughs) Well, that's the thing. That's why, you know, I had to kind of consider like, oh, people who want to deny medical treatment for women. Do I want medical treatment denied for them? I probably do, actually. Probably do. I'm not always a good person. I think think that's kind of, you know, (laughs) maybe that's the lesson we've learned today. (laughs) <laughs> sometimes not i'm not a always person. a great person well we'll let that be your takeaway everybody thank you so much keep that in your head for the next week until we're back heather's not necessarily a good person um this the music matters is however a very good show full of good people with good people not like heather no well i mean the verdict's out on me true music matters <laughs> however we know we know for a fact some good stuff with some good people But uh, we'll talk to you next week. Heather's going to keep being a questionable person. Yeah, think about it. I forgot to write a thing again. You know, I understand, though, why you went for that pumpkin spice apple pie cider chino. I really do. There's this one time I bought this tea that tasted like burning autumn leaves, but it, it had a fox on the box. That sounds really good. Burning autumn, autumn leaf really? tea? Yeah. I like a Burning. woodsy tea. I like a woodsy tea. It was very leafy. I the like fox leafy. was cute, though. I like a leafy tea. Hmm. Let's do it. Let's drink it. Let's drink it together. Okay. Let's have it be our last thing. <laughs> 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 it sounds like, a, sounds like a death pact. All right. <laughs> Let's not do that. We're fine, everybody. Ross and Heather are fine. <laughs>